This video will be about absolute value equations and inequalities. So when you're working with an absolute value equation, our first goal is always to get the absolute value piece alone. The absolute value bars and everything in it need to be by themselves. So to do that, we start doing our opposites like we would with a normal equation. First, we would need to add 19 to both sides. Those would cancel each other out. 13 plus 19 is 32. Now, a 4 in front of absolute value bars. Absolute value bars sometimes act like parentheses, and in this case, they act like parentheses in the fact that it really means 4 times those absolute value bars of n. So, in order to do our opposite, we have to divide by 4. So now we have our absolute value of n by itself equal to 8. Now at this point, we have to do something kind of weird. I'm going to tell you what we do first and then why we do it. We have to split this into two separate equations. The first one will just look like the same equation with no absolute value bars. The second one you will have everything on the left side the same. In this case, there's not much to change, but you'll see later on how you can have more stuff inside the absolute value bars. So everything on the left is the same, but the number on the right will become a negative, so negative 8. The reason this is is because of the way absolute value bars work. If I were to plug in absolute value of positive 8, that's one of our answers, a positive 8. Absolute value bars take a number and either keep it positive or make it positive. We're already positive, so we stay positive 8. But I could also plug in a negative 8, and that also comes out when we apply the absolute value bars as positive 8. So really we're saying this stuff inside could come out as positive 8. There's our first option. Or it could come out as negative 8. There's our second option. So that's why we split it up into two. Sometimes you'll need to do more steps to then solve for the variable. In this case, once we split it up, that's our answer. So let's do another example. Say we have absolute value of m over 2 minus 1 equals negative 3. So again, we've still got to get that absolute value bar piece alone. Absolute value of m. So we start doing our opposites. Our first opposite would be to add 1 to both sides. So we get absolute value of m over 2 equals negative 2. Then since we're dividing by 2, this time our opposite would be to multiply by 2. So we get absolute value of m equals negative 4. Now for this problem, we actually at this point have no solution because our absolute value is equal to a negative number. So, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, on the last problem, one of our answers was negative. Why can't we have this equal to a negative? So there's a big difference. On the last problem, we ended with absolute value of n equals 8, and split it into the 2. There's a big difference between splitting it up and identifying, hey, this is because when I plug in a negative 8, it could come out positive, and having the absolute value itself equal to a negative number. No matter what I plug in for m, if I were to do absolute value of positive 4, it's going to come out positive 4. If I were to do, I'm going to move no solution down so that we have a little more room. If I were to do absolute value of negative 4, it would still come out positive 4. It is literally impossible to have it come out as a negative 4. So if you have absolute value equal to a negative number, that's no solution. If you have absolute value equal to some positive number, you can split it up and identify I could plug in a negative value. Whereas this is trying to say my answer could come out negative. So this one has no solution. 
Now they can get a little more complicated. Say we have absolute value of 2x plus 9 equals 26. And actually, I'm going to change it a little bit just so we can have some stuff that we still have to move around. Say we have 2, absolute value of 2x plus 9 plus 4 equals 26. So we would still have to get this whole absolute value piece alone. So we're still going to do our opposites with everything outside the absolute value bars. So we'd have to minus 4 from both sides. Twenty-six minus four is twenty-two. We'd have to divide by two. Remember, this is really two times all of that. So divide by two, which gives us absolute value of two x plus nine equals eleven. So now we have to still split this up into two equations. Our first equation, we leave the left side alone and leave the right side alone. It's exactly like what we had above, except no absolute value bars. Our second equation, we still leave the left side alone. The absolute value stuff should never change, but the 11 should become a negative. So now we have two equations that we have to solve for x. So looking at just this left one, we would have to minus 9. Opposite of adding is subtraction. So we get 2x equals 2, and then we'd have to divide both sides by 2. And we would get x equals 1. The second one we also saw is still minus 9, but since it's a negative 11, negative 11 minus 9 gives me negative 20. Then we also still divide by 2, but again, since our values have changed over here, now it gives us a final answer of x equals negative 10. So there's our two answers. So we can have one last type of equation. Well, actually, one last type of inequality. If we have a greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to sign, then we have a different step to do at the end. So with these inequalities, we would still want to get the absolute value piece alone. In this case, it already is. And we still want to split it into two separate equations. The first one where nothing changes. The second one where the left side still stays the same, but we change two things now. We change both the inequality sign, it's going to flip, and we're going to make that 6 negative. Once we've done that, we can still solve for our variable. d would be greater than or equal to 4. Minus 2 on the second one. Yet d is less than or equal to negative 8. Now with inequalities, we can also draw this out on a numbered line. This is really an answer including a whole group of numbers. We want everything bigger than 4. That could be 4.5, or 5, or 5.13, or 6 and 3 fourths. There's a whole lot of ways to list the answers. So a number line will show you the whole grouping of our answers. So let's say this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in order to graph this, we have to learn some stuff from our symbol itself. The symbol will tell us two things. It'll tell us whether to use an open or a closed circle, and if we should shade to the right or to the left. When it is greater than or equal to, because there's a line underneath, that means we will use a closed circle. If it had been only greater than or only less than, 
use an open circle. If it's greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, we use a closed circle. The symbol also gives us a second set of information. Because it's greater than, or it could have been just, so this one's greater than or equal to, or it could just be greater than, we shade to the right. So we're shading in this direction. On our second one, we have less than. So less than or equal to means still use a closed dot. Negative 8 is all the way over here. And because it is a less than symbol, we shade to the left. So this one we shade to the left. So usually we say d greater than or equal to 4, and d is less than or equal to negative 8. It's possible that they may meet up if we had shaded in the other direction. If we ended up with an absolute value where we made our number line and let's say we had an open circle so this one I'm just making up I don't have an actual equation to go with it we had an open circle at 3 and an open circle at 3, 4, negative 5 and let's say we shade to the right here at negative 5 and shade to the left at negative 3 they eventually meet up so this one would have been x greater than negative 5, we're shading to the right. This one would have been x less than 3. Sometimes when you're shading and it comes up in between, they write this as one giant inequality. So the bigger number, that's going to stay the same, x less than 3. Then on this one, we're going to flip the inequality. We're going to have it negative 5 less than x. You have to go flip everything, the negative 5 and the x and the inequality symbol. So we can kind of just put that on the other side and make it one big inequality. So it is possible to represent the inequality that way. Usually you can figure out if you need to write it that way after you've drawn the graph to see if they meet or if they go in opposite directions. So that concludes our discussion on absolute value equations and inequalities.